Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and I'm joined by Railroad Jim again today, who's going to be helping me with the My Own Steam Train build, part two. Now I've called this video My Own Steam Train part two, because, well, it's part two, uh, <laughs> but also because this build is very heavily based on the My Own Train range, which is a Lego range around the 2000-2001 mark. Uh, so if you haven't seen episode one, I suggest you go back and watch that first, and there'll be more of the reasons for the inspiration behind this build. Uh, but one point that is worth really making again that I made last time is that I'm not trying to make a real-life train in Lego. Uh, a lot of people have uh, sort of suggested uh, what train I should be building, or maybe suggested or guessed rather uh, what train they think I'm building. And the answer is, well, none of those, because I'm actually trying to, for nostalgic reasons, uh, recreate an official Lego set, but kind of modernise them with my own twist. Uh, and the original idea was to use a really old Lego train set, like, say, set 720, train with 12-volt electric motor from way back in 1969. Uh, and I figured by using a set like that, it would look, by modern standards, absolutely archaic, <laughs> way, 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 way old, really blocky in Lego terms, and would therefore kind of represent a very old uh, steam train in my city. Uh, so that was the sort of thought that I'd make it look old by using kind of really old bricks and old building techniques. But I thought it was just a bit too lumpy. Uh, so basically I started looking nearer at, say, set uh, 3225, classic train from 1998. And that's a lot better. It's almost right. It's got a, a bit blockier build. It's got some interesting stickers coming in now and so on. Uh, but the era that I focused on when I stopped kind of looking uh, was around the 2000 mark, as I say, with the My Own Train range, because I think they had the right compromise between kind of a, a nostalgic set that costs way over £100 on eBay if you wanted to get one, but also a build that has got a bit more modern pieces uh, and is something that I can, uh, you know, add my magic to. Because I think some of those older blockier trains, there'd be very limited numbers of sort of modifications you can make to make them better uh, without fundamentally changing them. So as I say, I think this is a good compromise. So if we recap on what we did last time, very briefly, we did the tender. Uh, and the colour I picked was black, which makes the whole thing very hard to show on camera, though I did uh, notice you can see it all looking back, so that's not so bad. Uh, and in here, the main challenge was to add power functions. So we've got a power functions motor here on the bottom. Uh, and we've also got a power functions uh, IR receiver here buried in as well. And that was the real challenge to get all of that electric kit into here. Uh, so it has got a tail that's going to come out here and join up with a battery box in due course. Uh, and then we've got a little gap at the front for a wire to come out of here to light our locomotive. Now, some of the suggestions that you made from last time were, well, largely around the dark grey that I used to represent the coal. Uh, and I did that just because, well, I wanted it to contrast a bit against the black of the uh, actual tender itself. So what I've done now is done the uh, thing that you suggested added lots of black bits of coal, and you can kind of see what I mean now. Uh, although I've left the dark grey uh, plate that it's all based on to give it some contrast, you can see that it's very hard to differentiate between the edge of this and the actual coal itself. So I'm not entirely sure if that's better or worse, so you'll have to give me your updated opinion now you've seen both. Um, but yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Now, one suggestion that was given was to use the kind of gunmetal uh, pieces instead of black or dark grey, which is kind of a very, very, very dark grey in a way, and a bit sort of shiny. Uh, but that's good because coal is a bit shiny when you look at it uh, at certain angles. Um, but that hasn't really been available, that colour, in very many sets. And I thought I had some, but I didn't. I had silver studs, so I've actually only got one gunmetal stud. Uh, so essentially, I'm going to need to get a load of those if I'm going to uh, recreate this in that colour. So it might be that I go for that. Uh, but I will give you all a bedoying for that suggestion, those who mention it, just because, well, I've done it. <laughs> Whether I'm going to keep it is another matter. So here's your bedoying. <laughs> Uh, another little change that I've made since last time was just to put in a 1x2 brick here to separate 
kind of the coal section here from the back section of the tender. Uh, and that's because uh, we're now going to consider this bit as being the sort of water tank part of the tender. And I think that fits in rather well. So thanks for that suggestion as well. Um, and I had loads of good suggestions about alternatives for tenders. And, and I've done a lot of research actually and, and expanded my knowledge on trains quite a lot. Uh, I didn't realise that trains carried around so much water with them, as well as coal, to keep them going. And if you think about it, with it being a steam train and pumping out steam all the time, it's no surprise at all. It just shows how little knowledge I've got on this subject matter. Um, but basically, it was suggested to me that um, because I have technically a battery box here, which currently I was going to include in the first passenger wagon, and it is passenger wagons I'm going to be using rather than cargo ones, uh, I could, as an alternative, make a second tender, uh, and that would basically be pretty much the same as the one I've got, but with this buried within it, which is another challenge, because you just look at the size contrast there, it really would fill it, um, but that one would be purely for water. Uh, and that sort of a tender is called a canteen, uh, and it would actually follow behind this one. So it kind of be locomotive, tender one, and tender two. And I didn't even know that sort of thing existed. Uh, but it's generally for either trains that are going through a very arid region and therefore are going through even more water with no sort of uh, convenient places to reload with more, or ones that uh, just want to be non-stop, kind of like the Flying Scotsman uh, in the UK, which might have actually scooped up water out of a trough to refill its normal canteen, or on especially long touring journeys where it didn't want to do that and spray water all over the carriages of the paying customers, it might have an additional water canteen. So you can see that in these pictures here. Um, so part of me thinks that's an absolutely brilliant idea, uh, and part of me isn't quite so sure or whether it'll look that good by the time I've got this in, because it really is huge. It's going to be hard to uh, fit in a tender and a lot easier to fit in a carriage. And I kind of think having two tenders one after the other, I don't know if it's just my sort of novice train mind or what, but for me, it doesn't look right. It looks kind of like you've made a mistake uh, and put two in by accident. Uh, so the jury's out on that one still. Um, but those are my amendments from last time. Uh, so now we can really get on with today's build. Uh, so I've got my train base that I'm going to be using for the main bit of this. Uh, and this kind of ties in with what I was saying earlier about this being a my steam train type kind of build, not an official set. Uh, so I won't be using any of the newer pieces on train sets post uh, Emerald Knight in 2009. Uh, that's set 10194. Uh, and is the first one, I believe, to have used the sort of really big train wheels that are very popular amongst uh, Lego train enthusiasts now uh, to represent the big sort of train wheels that you do have on typical steam trains. But as I say, I'm going for an old and more nostalgic set, so I won't be using modern pieces like that. I'll be using the sort of more traditional, smaller train wheels, even though I appreciate, arguably, that doesn't look as good, because I want this train to look older, uh, in Lego terms than my current trains, which are all sort of uh, electric or diesel powered. Uh, so I think that will add to its age in a Lego setting, not real life. <laughs> uh, and the other thing that I got in the last haul last week was the very valuable and wonderful sticker sheet from the set in 2001. I said it was 30 years old, and obviously I couldn't do the maths between the current year, 2021, and 2001. So it's only 20 years old, not 30 years old, but nonetheless, there is a very good quality uh, sticker sheet from the original range. So probably the very first thing I can do is add two of these rather fantastically sort of silver outline 317s uh, to these uh, panels on the side of my tender, and that really will complete this build, uh, unless we do uh, more amendments to the um, coal, of course. Uh, and then we can start building on here with the next section. Right, so there's the first two of the stickers from my sticker sheet added to the side of the tender, and doesn't it look brilliant? 
those really pop against the black background. Uh, and indeed, this sticker sheet, its existence, actually really helped me choose the colour of the build. Um, I could have gone for dark blue or dark red or dark green or something like that would have looked absolutely great. But the fact that this sticker sheet exists with a black backing, uh, so it would tie in with black bricks, obviously, uh, really influenced my decision because I just thought a really dark, mysterious train with these wonderful things popping uh, out of the black would look really, really classy. So yeah, I like that a great deal. Uh, so we can put that to one side for now and focus on the main train build. Uh, so one of the biggest changes that I'm doing in this whole thing from the original set is adding power functions, of course. And we've done a lot of that already. Uh, and that is because power functions are kind of my method of powering all the trains in my city and it just helps having them all in the same thing and you can use the same controllers and all that because I've got more trains than I have uh, train lines now because I won't be doing any new train lines. I'm sorry to tell those of you who want to expand my system. Uh, but one aspect that I did want to keep from the original set was the sort of old school 1x2 light brick that looks like that with one of these reflector pieces on. Uh, and that will go right on the very front of the locomotive at the top, kind of on the nose. Uh, and I really like that just because it's so big and bright. I really had uh, ideas of this coming through my tunnels, uh, lighting its own way by way of this, and looking rather fantastic from the front. So that's definitely something I wanted to keep. Uh, and the way that's powered and we get power to the very front is by using obviously a power cable. Uh, but the best way of doing that is using one of the old school ones where you can just hit the light uh, on the top there uh, and it will uh, power its way uh, normally. Now that was actually uh, an expansion for that original set, 3748 light kit. But what I need to do then is actually make sure that this old school light block and this old school uh, power cable link up with uh, the newer system that is power functions. Now the power functions cable that's going to be connecting to our tender, which in turn is going to be connecting to a battery box, uh, has different connectors. Uh, and I've just put this one by two on to uh, uh, help with the build later. But you'll see that the old connectors will not fit with any of this top surface here. They just don't mesh. But the bottom surface, they will connect with because we've actually got those sort of metal edges. You might be able to see uh, on the inside of this lip here. Uh, so you can see that that will match up with these bits here. Uh, and work perfectly. So what I'm going to do is attach the new power cable to the old power cable, creating a circuit. So far, so simple. Uh, and that actually helps with a couple more things because I've got a kind of a deteriorated cable end on this, <laughs> on this older cable. They don't last forever, unfortunately. So this actually will be hidden on the inside of the train. Uh, but more importantly than that, it actually gives me kind of a point to add another light brick. And that is buried in here. So I thought, well, since I've got this kind of junction that's powered already halfway through the train, why do I not add another light brick in there and create kind of a fire in the firebox or in the boiler? I'm not sure what the technical term for that is. Uh, and have that kind of at the front of the cab where uh, Railroad Jim is shoveling his coal. So if we just add the um, battery box back on again, then we can see that that will be powering a light in there, in the depths of the actual cabin itself, as well as the light on the front. And I think that that is going to be a massive improvement on the original. So the thing that I need to do next is add some sort of flames and uh, fiery bits in front of here. Uh, so when it's all sort of glowing through with that light, it looks like Jim is feeding a very uh, hot furnace. Uh, and that is what obviously powers the train. So let's get on with that. So for the fire itself, uh, I'm going to start off with two cheese wedge pieces in trans orange. And to that, I'm going to add two of these rather small flame pieces, which used to be the plumes on knights' helmets in the castle range and so on, uh, in more, more sensible colours, of course, uh, just held by a headlight brick. And I'm going to have a pair of those, one on each side. Uh, so the light has to shine through those um, flame pieces and that's going to make the light a bit more irregular and a bit more like a genuine fire so when we've got railroad jim 
uh, shoveling coal in. Hopefully we can see past him uh, and see this sort of a view. We have a quick trial run. There you go. And that's looking a lot more fire-like and flame-like than if we just put one single sort of uh, translucent brick there. Yeah, it looks very realistic indeed, actually. So that's good. Uh, but we do have this great big power cable still in the way going through our cab. And the um, original set had all of this wiring quite exposed. And I want to have it a lot more tidy. So what I'm going to do is add a fake floor uh, that's kind of going to have this cavity for the wire underneath. And that just means if I put that there, that the new Power functions cable will come neatly out of the back with this much to sort of link up with the tender uh, and otherwise it's just an uninterrupted view of those flames so I like that and then this one will go on the inside out the front of course as we've already said so that's looking rather tidy I think so now we just need to finish the interior of the cab up uh, and for that I've kind of got this for the furnace door and that's the hole which we're shoveling the coal into, or Jim is more specifically. And that can just go there, so we can see all of the flames still perfectly well. Uh, and then we can start building all of that into the sides of the locomotive. So there we go, that holds that very firmly. Uh, and then we've got a nice big 2x6 brick. Uh, and I've put one of those control panel uh, 1x4 tiles on the top of there and I think that probably is in keeping but there is actually another sticker for this section uh, and that's that one there and on the original set that would have gone right above uh, their version of the furnace doors uh, on that 2x6 brick so I'll be putting all the stickers on the sort of right places for the uh, relevant set uh, just maybe in a slightly different location on my build so I think I will add that as well uh, and I can always take that one off if I feel I've got too many sort of dials but uh, I always think more dials is better than too few, so that's fine by me. So I'll do that, and then we can continue with the sides. So I think that looks pretty good with that sticker on, and the light shining through there. I think it'll look even more bright when we've kind of got the cabin on. It's looking more like that, but focused. <laughs> anyway, there we go for that one. And it's a real privilege putting on these really old stickers. I've done a great big wedge for the entire next section now. Uh, it's, yeah, it's really nice to sort of use them after they've been kept so nicely for all that time. It feels kind of special to be the one to be peeling them off. Uh, and with that in mind, the next ones are actually on these uh, 1x2x3 panels, and they look very special indeed. These would actually go on the alternate build uh, in this set uh, back in the day, but I've managed to incorporate them in because I need some straight sides to accommodate all of my wires on this section. And what I've done here is actually used a couple of different slope pieces. I've got one of these ones and one of those ones. Uh, and as a pair, they will let my old school wire out. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Uh, so to keep my wires nice and tidy, I've just got this kind of zigzag path for the wire to come out of here, go under here and out to the outside of the train. So when the rest of the... Uh, uh, boiler and all the rest of it is built it will be very discreet how this is actually exiting the inside uh, and joining the outside so that will be uh, a lot easier to see later I suppose uh, but now we can get on with the rest of the build and a lot more of the stickers these ones being the main ones that are repeating on the outside we've got six of those so I've just been applying them and Wow, they just look absolutely great. So yeah, some of the more modern sets uh, are using more intricate pieces, and this one is relying on uh, older stickers for a lot of its detail. But as I say, that's the kind of vibe I was going for, so I'm very happy with that. Yeah, so they're really popping. Uh, and then we've got these stickers, being the long ones from our sheet, uh, and they're representing all of the pipes and so on on the side. And I'm hoping I'm getting these the right way around. And that will go there and there on my build. Slightly different. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Uh, and then at the front we need a Technic brick with the cross in it and just one of these uh, axles so we can have a non-rotating kind of front bit as well. And by holding this wire to one side, I should be able to add the rest of this. Oh, except I need the sides. Forgot those. So here we've got some uh, profile bricks, or rather modified uh, plates with the bar on and the ladder on, all in black, obviously. 
and that'll go in that gap there and then very difficult but I'll need to add this roof into position I may not push this down very firmly just because I want it to connect very well to all of these bits so that will go like that and be the main body of our boiler uh, and then the original had a bright yellow bell and I thought I'd add a gold coloured brick on to represent kind of a brass bell instead because I thought that would be more realistic for my train and I'm not sure indeed if UK trains even had a bell in this sort of location if it's more of a USA thing uh, but I thought I'd add one anyway uh, and then this cable once I've finally attached it will actually link up with these clips and become the sort of bar equivalent uh, that I have got as a bar piece on this side. So it's kind of the workings tied in with these ones that are stickers uh, to represent all of the uh, external pipe work. So I think that's a really clever way of using this cable rather than having it going on the inside of this build and popping out at the front near the light, uh, actually having it popping out kind of at the back end uh, and then going all the way in plain sight. And I think that's really clever. Uh, right, so I'm going to push that down. We'll get that in position. We could even give that a bit of a trial run. Uh, and then we can build, of course, the cab on the back. All right, so it's really starting to look like a locomotive now. We've got the front windows on just to uh, help you get your bearings. I put the sort of greebling on the side. So we've got a couple of bits there and a couple of bits on the other side just to make it look a bit more random. Uh, and indeed the headlights on the front. Uh, and I've put one by one tiles there rather than uh, studs I thought that looked a little better uh, and this wire I think is a real feature it's very old and it's a little bit perished just because of age and the material it's made of so you have to be very careful with it you saw the other end how frayed it was I'm just trying to move that as little as possible because I don't want it really cracking for the bit that's visible uh, but it does work so we have got our light on the front at the same time as having our wonderful burner on the inside which by the time we've got the uh, thing in the city <laughs> uh, we've got railroad gym in there and we've got uh, the tender on the back we probably will never see again but I'll know it's there and that's important uh, right so yeah we've got all that detail on so a couple of things to finish off the front then um, first of all this is the sort of brick construct that you'll add to the back and top of that just to make it blend in more and they only made these bricks in white which is a bit of a shame because it does show up quite a lot but that was always the case uh, but they did give you two stickers here to kind of try and rectify that uh, and it's not what everyone will like because back in the day they did actually put uh, stickers across brick joins uh, it's usually called uh, sticker on assembly uh, and that will basically go on each side kind of across the side of both of those two bricks uh, but the benefit of doing that is that it will hide some of the white though not from the front uh, so I think I will be doing that uh, just to keep it authentic to the original and well I've got them why not uh, but the other thing we need to do before I do that off camera is uh, add on a dish piece. Now I did get a dish piece that was just black. So far so boring. But on one of my hauls uh, I did also get this which you'll recognize more that way up as being the Green Lantern uh, symbol from the set 76025 Green Lantern versus Sinistro. Uh, but I thought well it's just got some detail on that will kind of uh, you know match uh, the yellow elements that are in here the few that there are uh, and I thought if I turned it 180 degrees so it's facing the other way around it probably wouldn't uh, offend too many people I thought and I thought that that on the front might look a bit more interesting so you have to let me know in the comment section if you like that if you like the idea of the stickers across assembly or not uh, and then I thought I could also add one of these pieces just as kind of one of the I don't know what you'd even call it. You can tell me that in the comment section is below. But the thing that's often on the front that almost looks like a big uh, rivet to tighten things up uh, there as well. So, yeah, I don't want this to be known as like the Green Lantern train or anything like that. Uh, but I did think that that was quite an interesting bit of colour for the front of it. Uh, and if we don't like it, we can always go back to this one. Uh, and that does bring me on to the naming, which I mentioned last time. Uh, I had quite a few suggestions for names, including Midnight Express, which I quite liked. Uh, the Maid Marion, which, you know, it's kind of a feminine name. Uh, but one of the most famous trains in the UK is the Flying Scotsman. 
Uh, and I thought we could sort of do a variation on that name uh, and maybe something to do with Brick Nottingham and Robin Hood Bricks and basically make this the Flying Outlaw instead. And I thought that was quite a fun name. So do let me know what you think of the name Flying Outlaw uh, because I think having a very fast, black and mysterious train will, um, you know, really uh, suit that name. So, yeah. Uh, right, so I'm going to put the stickers on the sides of this, and then we can get on with building the cab and using the last two on two similar panels uh, to this that will echo the number. As I've said already, it's been a great privilege uh, applying all of these wonderful stickers that have been kept in such a pristine condition for so many years. Uh, but I found uh, it not quite the same positioning these ones across an assembly. I found it felt a bit wrong <laughs> and I really didn't enjoy it. But I've tried to do it as best I can, lining up the sticker with this sort of bottom corner from this side uh, so you don't see any of that white brick either at the kind of front or underneath. And that will be further concealed when we use one of these modified plates with a kind of, uh, uh, well, I always think of them as guns because they used to be on them, uh, old classic space sets. But when that's applied on the top, it'll actually hide the little bit of white that's visible on the top as well. So it will be completely black from all sides bar the front. Uh, so I think that's quite a good setup, uh, even if it does look slightly off center perhaps. Uh, and it's worth mentioning at this point that the stickers were really the only uh, hard to find or expensive item. And there are quite a few sheets of this still available on Bricklink. Uh, I suppose if you want to do the exact build I've done, including the light fitting, that is harder to find nowadays or a bit more expensive. But all of the parts for the build itself are readily available pieces uh, and are not difficult to get at all or expensive. So you could buy uh, an, a whole complete set from eBay for over £100 or you could just do it yourself as I have. Right, so onto the cab, and I've moved Railroad Jim into his position in there, and I think it's exactly right for that. We've got a grab rail round here, the windows on the side, and I've added one of those 317 stickers there. And now I think you might get the idea of why I wanted to do it in black, because it isn't uh, difficult to see, black on black now, with all the other bits and details on, I think it looks rather fantastic. Uh, so there is our other side that I can just put on there. Uh, and then rather than do the kind of blocky roof with studs showing that was on the original, I thought I would do kind of a curved version with all of these curved uh, pieces. Uh, and if you remember back to my hauls, if you watch those, uh, when I was getting a lot of random sort of black slopes and things like that, uh, several of you were asking what it was for and I said it was a secret. Well, it was for this. So there you go. So there is the roof on the cab, and it's very smooth, no studs, looks fantastic. Uh, and I've added this little bit on the front here, so we can add, well, a tile really. And I, I couldn't decide whether it should be the name of the train itself, which will be a bit hard if I'm going to call it the Flying Outlaw, because <laughs> there isn't a Lego official sticker with that written on it. Uh, but I did have a few alternatives. It could be that uh, it's going towards its destination which might be a day trip to Mount Clutchmore. I'm not sure how that will look in brown on there. Uh, not too bad, actually. Uh, this is from uh, an old station set, just saying Lego City. And that probably looks less good, I think. I don't know, but I I'm not even sure if they had the destinations on the front. Uh, I could add uh, a number. This one will need repositioning using my patented hot tea technique. <laughs> But if I use that, this could be 7903. Uh, but I'm not sure I want a great big red tile on that either. Though, again, that does show a bit of contrast. Or I could even put it on a yellow sticker, maybe. Don't know. Or a yellow backdrop to uh, sort of represent this. But then it's already got a number here, 317. So that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Uh, another alternative was I was got these um, 698 stickers from that old cargo train, the heavy haul train. And obviously I've got that in my city, so I couldn't use the same number for that. But I figured that if I turned it the other way up, I've got 86009, <laughs> which isn't a genuine Lego set or indeed even a Lego piece. So that could work. But again, I'm not sure I want a second number on there at all. Uh, and then from the other recent train, I've got this Lego city uh, one in green which could go on the front there so I don't know which one of those I prefer but for a holding position 
I'm just going to put Mount Clutchmore on there and maybe this train is a tourist train which would make a lot of sense uh, and that's where it's off to. Yeah and the brown kind of ties in with some of this as well uh, but do tell me what you think. Uh, maybe it looks a bit too twee now I'm not sure. Uh, good so there is our view into the cabin and it is very dark indeed but remember we will be seeing it a little bit lighter like that. Ooh, that's quite a satisfying glow. I'm not sure if we'll see it when uh, this is all behind. Uh, so the only thing really to do now is to add the wheels. And I've just used the exact setup that was in the original set, which is quite big setups really. Uh, and they can go in like that and like that. Uh, and although these haven't got the big train wheels as we discussed earlier, I do quite like these sort of little steps up that allow access all over the place. So there we go, there is our locomotive, and there is our tender, and that is our full My Own Steam Train. And all that really remains now is to have this going around Brick Nottingham on the track. Well, there was one bit of the build that I forgot to uh, mention, and that was joining the two parts of these together. And that may sound very simple in a way, but it really wasn't. Connecting the uh, cable that was coming out of the back of this, the power functions cable, with all of the electrics that's in here that was already very congested was <laughs> a real struggle. Uh, indeed, I had to put the block that had just two connectors on it on its side, because with three connectors, it was far too tall for the cavity. Uh, and then I've had to kind of Constantina all the wires all around what's left and really just close this in uh, <laughs> and it's under pressure now. It could almost spring open and all those wires explode into a kind of confetti or spaghetti maybe. <laughs> anyway, it's in there safe for now. Uh, I would show you, but I really don't want to have to do all of that again. Uh, but we do have the two joined together looking rather amazing the uh, flying outlaw and at the moment they're dragging this battery box it's going to power the light on the front and the light on the inside which you can just see glowing there so as a temporary kind of front carriage because i don't think i'm going to do the second tender as i said uh, i'm going to just use this for now uh, i haven't got pieces to make this into a carriage uh, and i'm going to have passenger carriages probably two or three uh, and the front one, I think I have the battery box right at the front and have that either as a guard section or have that as a buffet car, uh, sort of kitchen bit. But anything with smaller windows, so you won't really see the battery box in here. Or another one, of course, is a baggage car. Uh, but there is our setup for trial in the city. Cool. So here is the flying outlaw in the city. Haven't got much videoing time left, but I knew you wouldn't forgive me if I didn't show you going around uh, the city at least once. So we've got the burner lit that hopefully you can see through a gap there. Yep, there we go. Uh, and the headlight is on. Yep. So all it requires now is for a bit of power from my power functions controller to, oh, off it goes. Get it moving. So we better do a slow first lap. Otherwise, it might hit something rather fatally through the double tunnel there. That was the main obstacle I was worried about. So I might give it a bit more welly. Oh, there it goes. Through the train shed. Let's get a wide shot for over the bridge. Oh, yes. That's looking good, isn't it? I mean, there is something very romantic about a steam train. Very beautiful. And the way it sort of pops between the buildings like that, I think it looks rather wonderful. Now we have got a bit of a ticking noise. And I'm kind of sensing that's coming from the um, tender where the motor is. And it's probably just because I haven't spaced the wheels perfectly right uh, on the Technic axle. So I can fix that. But then again, that noise is quite fun, isn't it? Makes it sound a bit more sort of ch -ch 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 -ch, like a like a choo-choo train so I'll give it a bit more welly after all it is the flying outlaw and not the uh, meandering outlaw or pondering outlaw give it even more ah, this is where I start getting nervous because if it crashes 
all that work <laughs> will be undone. So I think I'm going to slow it down. Indeed, uh, I'd have to do all of that rewiring again. So I think I'll bring it to a close in the station. You can hear it coming around again. Probably should have slowed that down a bit more uh, gradually, but nonetheless. So I think that's looking rather good. Uh, and the tourists to Brick Nottingham can take that around the city uh, and maybe go to surrounding cities, probably excluding Brick Derby for obvious reasons. Cool. Well, I do hope you agree that that has been a good success, part two of our flying outlaw train. You can almost smell the steam coming out of its funnel. And it looks very sleek in this black colour. Very traditional shape, being a great contrast to all the modern trains that I've had to date around the city. Uh, and I haven't had time to do... Uh, train cam today unfortunately but I will have to do that in due course so we can have some really up close pictures maybe with a chaser train on the other track sort of getting some real close up views uh, but as always thank you very much for watching it is appreciated do remember to like comment and subscribe for more awesome Lego videos and if you value this channel there are many ways in which you can support it do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, well, we'll be doing a brick haul on Wednesday. And then on Friday, we'll be doing another fairground update as Fairground Fridays. So until then, see you! <laughs>